So you may have noticed that whenever I cloned coins in Wet Dry World or Dire Dire Docks, I would always clone red coins, and maybe the occasional yellow coin, but I would never clone blue coins, which you would think would be the best. So let's talk about that. But before we can get into the details of how the cloning works, we first need to understand how blue coins work in general. So this is what you're used to seeing. When Mario loads the area, all that's there is the blue coin block. Once Mario ground pounds the block, it disappears, and the blue coins appear. Then Mario can collect the blue coins. But if the timer runs out, then the blue coins disappear. So pretty simple, but it's not the whole story. To really understand what's going on, we need to go deeper. You see, normally we can't see the difference between an object that's unloaded and one that's loaded but invisible. So to distinguish between these two states, we'll now represent invisible objects with a dotted outline. This will help you see what's actually going on. Now back to the demo. Now you can see that before Mario ground pounds the blue coin block, the blue coins are already loaded, but invisible and intangible. You see, the blue coins don't load when you ground pound the block. They load when you go through the loading point, or enter the course if there is no loading point. When you ground pound the block, then the blue coins turn visible, and the blue coin block turns invisible. Once again, Mario can collect the blue coins, and at the end of the timer, the blue coins and blue coin block unload. But now let's go even deeper. Now we're going to show each object's state, and the signals they use to communicate. Here is a key. Signals will be green for loading and red for unloading. The state of the objects will represent whether that object still functions or not. A green state means that the object will continue to load and unload as necessary. A red state means that it's done loading, usually that it's been used already so it can't be used anymore. So now back to the demo. When Mario goes through the loading point, the blue coins and the blue coin block are loaded. If Mario ground pounds the block and collects the blue coins, then the coins will unload, and you can see that their state is now red. If the timer runs out, then the remaining blue coins and the blue coin block will unload. Alternatively, consider the case of when Mario collects all the blue coins. If all of the blue coins get collected, as in all of their states become red, then the timer will be cut short, and the blue coin block will disappear right away. So just to reiterate, blue coins will unload if the timer runs out, or if they're collected. The blue coin block will unload if the timer runs out, or if all the blue coins are collected, as in all of their states are red. So now we're ready to talk about cloning. Now normally when you release a blue coin clone, it just disappears, and you don't collect it. Why is that? Well, let's look at the demo. In general, when you release a clone, the clone takes on the attributes of whatever you cloned, such as whether it's visible and or tangible. You can see that the blue coins start off invisible and intangible, so if we release the clone of one right now, the clone will be invisible and intangible. That's why that's been happening, and that doesn't really help us at all. A better approach would be to first make the blue coins visible, and then release the clone. So we just get some hands-free action going, that way we can hold on to the clone while we ground pound. Once we ground pound the blue coin block, we can release the clone and collect it. Notice that if I collect all the other blue coins as well, the timer doesn't stop. It keeps going until the end. So what's going on here? Well, let's go back to the demo and figure it out. Now, the thing about clones is that they don't send or receive signals. So, once we release the blue coin clone, Mario gets the 5 coins for collecting it, but the game doesn't know that it's been collected. Look how its state is still green. Even if we collect all the other blue coins, the game doesn't think that they've all been collected, and so the timer doesn't stop short. The timer will continue the full length, and once it ends, the blue coin block will unload. Now look what's happened here. Because we cloned the blue coin, it surpassed the end of the timer. If we leave and come back, the blue coin will still be there, much the way a yellow or red coin comes back after cloning them. But unlike those coins, the blue coin starts off invisible and intangible. So although it's still there, we can't collect it any more times. The blue coin block is gone, and that was the only thing that gave us access to the blue coins. So long story short, when you clone a blue coin, you still have the blue coin, but you no longer have access to it. So now you might be wondering what happens if we clone the blue coin block. If we release the clone before we ground pound the block, nothing interesting really happens. The blue coins are still invisible, and we can't interact with the block clone anymore. 
The more interesting case is when we release the clone after ground pounding the block. When we do this, the timer sound actually stops, so I guess the block was responsible for making that sound. However, the timer itself is still going, and so the blue coins will disappear if we wait too long. So, we might as well collect them. Afterwards, if we leave and come back, the blue coin block will still be there, since it never actually unloaded, but it won't actually do anything when we ground pound it. This all makes sense if we look at the demo. Here, we see Mario cloning the blue coin block. When he releases it, the clone will be invisible and intangible, since that's how the block currently is. If Mario collects the blue coins, then they will unload, and the timer will stop if he collects all of them. Under normal circumstances, collecting all the blue coins would unload the blue coin block. But remember, clones can't send out signals, and so the block remains functional with its green state. That means if we leave and come back, it will still be there. But once we ground pound it, it realizes that all the blue coins have already been collected, since they all have red states, which instantaneously unloads it. And so that explains what we saw earlier. One side note is that you may remember my video where I talked about the yellow coin spawning point. In that video, I explained how if you clone the spawning point, then you can collect the yellow coins without the game realizing that you did, since their signals aren't received by the spawning point clone. Unfortunately, that situation is different from the one we have here, in that cloning the blue coin block doesn't allow us to collect the blue coins without it counting. The crucial difference is that the blue coin states are kept track of by the game, whereas the yellow coin states are kept track of on the coin spawner itself, which we could clone. So sadly, cloning the blue coin block doesn't help us gain any extra coins. The block itself surpasses the timer, but no blue coins do. So, long story short, when you clone the blue coin block, you'll still have access to blue coins, but there'll be no more blue coins left. So now we can see the problem. When we clone blue coins, the blue coin will still be there if we leave and come back, but we'll no longer have access to it since the blue coin block will be gone. And when we clone the blue coin block, we'll retain access to the blue coins since the block will still be there, but there'll be no more blue coins left. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Either we retain the coins or access to them, but not both. Ideally, we would need both in order to gain extra coins out of the process. If you noticed, in both the blue coin clone and the block clone demos, we were only able to collect 20 coins, which is how many there were naturally. We didn't gain any extra coins out of it. So, is there any hope for getting more coins out of it? Well, I happen to have one more trick up my sleeve. And that's what happens when you leave the area during the timer. An easy way to test this is in Tiny Huge Island. Here, I ground pound the block and then leave before the timer finishes. I also collected a coin just so we can see what happens for that too. When we go back in, the blue coin block is still there. And if we ground pound it, the coin we didn't collect is still there too. This makes sense if we look at the demo. Here we see Mario ground pound the block and then leave before the timer finishes. Any coins that weren't collected will still have their green state, so they'll be back again when we return, along with the blue coin block. Because of this trick, we actually could make blue coin clones profitable by doing the following procedure. We clone a blue coin, and after ground pounding the block, we collect the clone. Then before the timer runs out, we exit the area. When we come back, everything will still be there. So we basically just got 5 extra coins. You can see that this allows us to get to 25 coins, which is more than there are naturally. So, if we could pull off this maneuver, we could actually repeat it for infinite coins. But the question is, can we do it? Can we make it to the loading point before the timer runs out? Well, in Dire Dire Docks, I don't think it's possible. We can't even bring the blue coin clone over to the blue coin block. So, we'll focus solely on Wet Dry World. The problem is that we need to get to the loading point before the timer runs out. And that doesn't leave us very much time, even if we play super well. We're going to need a better plan. One idea I had was to use a teleport clone. We can clone the teleport so that it brings us straight into the pipe. As you'll see, this allows us to get to the loading point in time, but there's a critical problem. If we use our one clone on the teleport, then we can't clone the blue coin. If we left and came back with a blue coin clone, then the teleport would just be back in its normal spot. So this idea is not going to work. 
My second idea was to maybe use Chukya to get to the loading point faster, but there's a problem with this idea too. You can't lower Chukya while you're still holding the blue coin clone, so this method won't work. My only other idea was to use speed to get there faster. We can't build up speed beforehand because it would all be cancelled out by the ground pound. We need to build up speed during the timer, and the express elevator is a good way to do this. But even if I backwards long jump into the pipe, the swimming still takes too long, and I don't get there in time. I also tried backwards long jumping to the loading point directly in the hopes of going through the walls, but it doesn't really work. I just get stuck in some sort of limbo world. Here, Mario can run as much as he wants in any direction, but according to his position variables, he's not actually getting anywhere, and the camera can't even find him. So I don't think that's what we want. So there you have it, everything there is to know about blue coin cloning. Just to recap, cloning the blue coins or the blue coin block by themselves don't allow for productive coin collecting. The only possible way to make it advantageous would be to clone a blue coin and then leave the area before the timer runs out. But as we've seen, there just doesn't seem to be any way to do that fast enough. But hey, you never know. So, thanks for watching.